Hello. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Domian from the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, learning and behavior. This class has to do with uh, conditioning and learning and uh, how uh, that relates to producing changes in behavior. So uh, welcome to the class. Uh, welcome to this uh, lecture series. And I thought a good way to get things rolling is for me to demonstrate a piece of behavior that I've learned. <laughs> and then we can kind of see what learning and behavior is all about. So uh, I uh, played a viola on occasion. And uh, here, is, uh, here is my viola. And I'm going to play some for you. Piece of behavior. So what I would like for you to do at this point is to take a moment and describe that behavior, okay? And uh, you might want to stop the, uh, the video, give yourself a chance to reflect on this a, a bit, and uh, jot down some notes. And I'll, uh, I'll let you go ahead and do that. And then we'll talk about what kinds of descriptions you might have provided. And I've done, uh, you know, I've, I've played for various people over the years. And I've been uh, always uh, I'm, I'm interested in what they have to say about it. <laughs> so I, I uh, did a little performance yesterday. And uh, on the person that uh, was listening, uh, this is... Uh, someone in a hospital uh, who was, uh, uh, has a terminal disease. And they enjoy music, so I thought I'd play some music for him. And uh, his response was, Mike, I didn't think you were so accomplished in playing the instrument. So that was one description of behavior. Uh, some people have said, uh, oh, wow, that was pretty cool. Uh, some have said, boy, that was really beautiful. <laughs> Uh, often what they say is, oh, wh wh who wrote that piece? Uh, or they might say something like, golly, that kind of got me going. That was pretty energetic. Uh, or they might say, boy, that shows a lot of talent. Uh, or they might say that made me feel better and I'm, I'm happier. <laughs> it, it improved my mood. Uh, and so on. So you get all these kinds of descriptions of a musical performance. And uh, for someone who studies learning and behavior, what strikes me about these descriptions is none of them describe actual behavior. Uh, they may describe the background of the person doing the performance, such as, oh, you must have spent a lot of time practicing, or uh, something about that individual. Uh, you, you sure seem to be musically talented. 
Uh, they may describe the impact of the performance on them as it, it oh boy, that made me feel energetic. And, or uh, um, uh, that was really cool. This is going to be a neat course. Well, <laughs> and I've, had, I've actually had st uh, students who told me that in an in-person class that I, I taught last uh, spring. Anyway, so I didn't make that one up. <laughs> Uh, but what's striking about it is that uh, none of these are descriptions of behavior. And what strikes me, what, what, what I find remarkable, is that we often don't actually see behavior. We don't pay attention to behavior. We pay attention to uh, uh, someone's intentions. Uh, we pay attention to whether they're uh, angry or their emotions and or whether they're happy or, or angry or spiteful or vengeful. Uh, we, we pay attention to the cognitive content of what they say. It's like, oh boy, that was a really clever thing to say. Or, oh, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Uh, uh, so we talk about the information that they talk about, but we rarely uh, describe behavior and I don't think people actually see behavior. <laughs> like uh, right now, I'm using my right hand quite a bit to gesticulate here. And so any description of what I'm doing right now is would have behavioral description would have to include that. And any description of uh, the musical performance, of course, would have to include the fact that I'm standing upright. I'm holding an instrument. I'm, I'm, I'm moving fingers of the uh, left hand. I'm moving the bow arm. Uh, and uh, it, those movements are, are really incredibly precise. And, that sounds reasonably in tune. That doesn't sound in tune. And the uh, difference in the finger position is like uh, less than a millimeter. So the fingers have to hit the fingerboard uh, just the right spot. And then after they're off by just a little bit, it sounds crappy. <laughs> and similarly with the bow arm. I mean, if I'm a... <laughs> you probably no doubt heard plenty of people play uh, violin uh, uh, really badly. <laughs> so I don't need to demonstrate that. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, precision involved in... And drawing the bow across the string so that uh, it makes a good sound. The bow has to go across the string at exactly a perpendicular angle. And so the angle makes a difference. Uh, the other thing that makes a big difference is the pressure. That's different from, from that sort of thing. And during the course of a note or a piece, you're varying the pressure. Anyway, uh, the full behavioral description of what you saw is very complicated. Uh, it uh, probably involves dozens and dozens of different responses and modulations. They're very delicate modulations uh, of those responses. And uh, we don't see any of that. <laughs> you don't see any. The only place where you really see a lot of behavior is in sports where you do pay much closer attention to actual responses. But uh, our daily lives uh, consist of a lot of really complicated responses, and many of them have to be learned. Uh, uh, a uh, rather simple response uh, is to uh, take, a, uh, take a coffee cup and take a sip. <laughs> that turns out not to be so easy. I mean, we take it for granted and we don't even pay attention to it. Uh, but uh, give a coffee cup to a two-year-old and have them take a sip and the stuff ends up all over their uh, bib and they're wearing a bib because they keep pouring stuff on their clothes. 
And so it takes quite a bit of coordination to get the cup to the right level, to tip it, to move it close to the mouth at just the right point and tip it again and, and so on and so forth. So uh, behavior is very complicated. And because of its complexities, it, there are a lot of complexities involved in how you learn behavior. And uh, we're going to uh, embark on a journey uh, to explore all those things. And uh, if you don't remember anything from this class at the end, uh, except for the fact that behavior is complicated and we typically don't even see what's going on. We don't appreciate, we can't articulate, we can't, I cannot identify and describe exactly what's going on. If, if that's all you learn during the, this course, that's the only thing you take away, you will have become a different person and, you were gonna, and you're going to see the world differently. I mean, I've been looking at behavior for, for most of my adult life and I really enjoy it because, I mean, it, it has enriched my life because it, it, I marvel at the things I see people do at the things I see animals do. Uh, and I marvel about it from the standpoint of how complicated it is and how complex it might be to train a response like that. Anyway, it's a lot of fun and I hope you'll have fun and we'll see you uh, from time to time <laughs> for the rest of the semester. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.